In the Northern Hemisphere, summer is here and we're spending more time out in the sun. Let's talk about the best way to protect yourself. Hello fellow geeks and welcome back to Running Geek Girl. My name is Heather and I am glad you are here. Like I said, it is summertime and we are spending more time out in the sun. And so we need to talk about some great ways as runners that we need to protect ourselves from the sun. So we're going to talk about 10 things that runners need to know about wearing sunscreen. Number one, look for the words broad spectrum on the label. The two types of UV light and sunshine that damage your skin are UVA and UVB rays. Sunscreen labeled broad spectrum protects against both of those types of rays. Only sunscreens that protect against both are allowed to advertise the words broad spectrum on the label. Number two, if you have sensitive skin, you might want to take a look at the label first. Some sunscreens have fragrances or alcohols that might be irritating to your skin. It also helps to look for sunscreen that uses just physical blockers such as titanium dioxide or zinc oxide instead of sunscreen that uses a chemical blocker like uh, octocrylene and such like that. The physical blockers have less risk of irritating your skin. Number three, if you wear makeup, you may already be wearing SPF. Now, if you are the type of person who wears makeup, then there are tinted moisturizers, foundations, and even powders that contain an SPF, which means sun protection factor. So double check the label of your daily makeup to see if you are using a makeup that includes an SPF of 15 or higher. Now, unless you use a really thick layer of makeup, you're still going to have to add sunscreen on top of that as well. Don't just rely on your makeup. For the face, you need to look for face moisturizers that have sunscreen in them. These sunscreens usually don't have the typical sunscreen smell and they may feel nicer on your skin. Also, don't forget to put sunscreen on your neck and on your upper chest. Put this on in the morning after you wash your face every day and it'll help protect your skin. Number four, check for an SPF between 30 and 50 for everyday use. Now you want to look for an SPF of specifically 30 or higher. Now SPF 15 is going to filter out 93% of rays. SPF 30 is going to block out 97% of rays and SPF 50 blocks out 98% of the sun's rays. There is no sunscreen that will block out 100% of the sun's rays. To do that, you would just have to stay inside. For daily use, you might want to consider using at least SPF 50. If you're going to be outside for a longer time, for instance, on a long run, if you're going out for a swim, if you're going out cycling as part of your cross training, then wear a higher SPF. Number five, you get to choose between cream or spray, or you could use both. They are both handy in lots of situations. You may want to wear a cream for yourself, but if you're going to be putting sunscreen on kids, then sometimes a spray is easier. Sprays are also really convenient for protecting areas that might be hard to apply a cream sunscreen to, like your scalp, the tops of your feet. If you do use a spray though, you might wanna be careful if you are around open flames, such as if you were on a camp out or something like that, because some sprays do contain alcohol and they can be flammable. Number six, remember to protect your skin even if it's cloudy outside. Now with skin cancer rates currently on the rise, it is important to make sure that you're avoiding overexposure to the sun. Use sunscreen even when it is overcast. Don't assume that your clothes are going to do all of the work. Not all running clothes that advertise themselves as sun protecting are going to protect you from both UVA and UVB rays. Uh, so also you would want to wear a hat and sunglasses. Now a 2011 study of adults in the U.S. found that the best way to avoid sunburn is to just regularly find shade. Also it's best if you schedule your runs sometime before 11 or after 2 because the hours from 11 to 2 is usually when the sun's rays are the strongest. If you are headed out on a run and you don't want to wait 15 minutes for it to soak into your skin then you may want to consider using a mineral sunscreen because first of all it does contain safer ingredients, but it also will immediately start blocking you from the sun's rays. You don't have to wait for it to sink into your skin. That brings us to number seven, which is you can double up on protection by wearing the proper clothing. Clothing is usually your first line of defense against UVA rays. Hot temperatures and added clothing can be a tough combination to balance sometimes, but with more moderate temps, of course, you can cover your skin with as much as possible, such as long sleeves, a higher neckline, and so on. You remember that there are some clothes that are SPF protection as well. However, they will not block 
all of the rays, so you're going to have to add sunscreen as well. Remember to wear a hat because it will protect your head, your eyes, portions of your face, and even provide some SPF protection. Also, wear sunglasses for a variety of reasons. First of all, your face is more relaxed with sunglasses on, so you won't be squinting. That means you're holding less tension in your face. UV protection in sunglasses helps prevent skin damage and wrinkles around your eyes, plus a significant portion of skin cancer can be found on the eyelids. And UV rays can increase your odds of developing cataracts, so if you have a history of those in your family, this can help guard against them for as long as possible. Number eight, a big question that a lot of runners ask is, what about my vitamin D exposure? We all need vitamin D. It spurs bone growth, and without it, we would be at risk of conditions like osteoporosis. Vitamin D also gives you a huge boost to your immune system, and some in the medical community believe that it can stave off a number of diseases, while having a vitamin D deficiency can open a whole realm of problems. The problem is, people tend to think that using sunscreen and other forms of sun protection leads to a vitamin D deficiency, and that the best way to get vitamin D is through unprotected sun exposure. But that leads to a whole other set of problems. The scientific research has never once shown that people that use sunscreen on a daily basis suffer from vitamin D insufficiency. In fact, the people who use sunscreen daily can maintain their vitamin D levels. The truth is it doesn't take a lot of sun exposure for your body to produce vitamin D. Even committed proponents of unprotected sun exposure recommend no more than 10 or 15 minutes of exposure to your arms, legs, abdomen, and back. And that's only two to three times a week and you need to follow it up with proper sun protection. But just that minor amount of exposure is already going to be all of the vitamin D that your body can muster. After that, your body automatically starts to dispose of the extra vitamin D in order to avoid an overload, at which point your sun exposure is not gonna give you anything but sun damage without any of the benefits. One of the best ways to supplement your body's vitamin D levels is through your diet, through fatty fish such as salmon, mackerel, and tuna, as well as things like egg yolks, beef, liver, and cheese. And many common foods such as milk and orange juice are fortified with vitamin D. The bottom line is there are some great ways to get vitamin D that don't require you to be out in the sun without any type of protection and spending a ton of time out in the sun without any protection especially anything longer than 20 minutes is just going to overload your body with more vitamin D than it can handle and you'll just end up damaging your skin. Number nine you are going to have to reapply that sunscreen and probably more often than you think. The typical sunscreen that you wear is going to last around one to two hours, so you need to plan on reapplying, especially on areas that are going to burn easily, such as your face, tops of your ears, and so on, at least every hour or so. Keep in mind that although many sunscreens will make claims of being waterproof or sweatproof, they are not completely waterproof or sweatproof, and they are going to wear off. So make a plan to reapply if you're going to be out for a while. I usually suggest carrying a travel size bottle of sunscreen in your running pack if you plan on being in the sun for much longer runs or if you're going to be out for several hours, maybe have someone meet you at an aid station if you're in a race. And if you are in the water for any reason, make sure to reapply once you get out. And finally, number 10, you may not be wearing enough sunscreen. Most people don't actually apply enough sunscreen, which is why undesirable sunburns and tanning occur despite the fact that you're putting it on. So to achieve the full SPF protecting against UVB radiation reflected on a bottle of sunscreen, you need to use a approximately two milligrams of sunscreen per square centimeter of skin. So this means applying about the equivalent of a shot glass or two tablespoons of sunscreen to any exposed areas of your face and body. A nickel sized dollop just to your face. And if you're using a spray, then apply until you have an even sheen over all of the skin. So there you go. There are 10 things that runners really need to know about wearing sunscreen. And this is something that's really important to me. For those of you who have been watching the channel a while, you remember that back during the pandemic, Pandemic, I was having to deal with some serious skin cancer issues that required uh, some extensive surgery on my part and so I am diligent about my sunscreen now and I would love for you to be diligent about it too because I don't want you to have to go through anything that I went through. So did you find this informative or helpful? Why don't you let me know down in the comments below. You can also let me know what brand of sunscreen you personally like to use. You can also click that subscribe button down below. It keeps you up to date on all the running adventures that I'm having all the time and it doesn't cost you 
watched you a thing. You can also follow me on social media. All the links are down in the description. You can find me across all platforms under the name Running Geek Girl. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad you could be here. Remember to laugh hard, run fast, and be kind. I'll see you later. Oh, 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 oh